Okay, next thing we are going to discuss in today's this brief session is contract asset under IFRS 15. Let me remove this thing because I want to write more here. Okay, now let me tell you first the background of this thing. When I say, let me, and I'm going to type it so that because I have to type more contract asset or we talk about contract liability. So when I'm talking about or saying it is contract, so actually these are slightly different transactions than ordinary selling and delivery of goods. I mean, if you ask me to, if you purchase from me some computers or projectors or a generator or some furniture, I deliver it to you in one day and the job is done and delivery is done, performance obligation is met, amount I have received or maybe invoice I have given, that's a normal transaction. But when I say contract asset, actually what comes to mind is generally what comes to mind is construction contracts. Okay. And these construction contracts are usually uh, of long period of time, maybe one year, maybe two year, maybe three year. And the invoicing and the style of work is very different. You know, for example, there is a contract which is for 3 million and, or maybe, I don't know, 10 million, 50 million. On the date of signing, when you sign the contract, within two days, they give you 20, 30% advance, which means that let's suppose it is 5 million. Within three days, you get 1 million. They say, take 1 million and start the job. So you have received the money, but you have not done any job. That is a contract liability. So contract liability means when you receive the money and you still have not performed the performance obligation or the work which you are supposed to do, that is called contract liability. So it's very common. And then they gave me 1 million. They, and actually, how did they give me 1 million? Because they, they told me that please send invoice because without invoice, they cannot give. So today I had a meeting with my client they have assigned me a contract. We finalized everything. We signed the contract. And they say, Mr. Ali, go back to office and send us one invoice. We will give you advance and you start the work. So I came back to my office. Based on the contract, I created one invoice. I sent them the invoice and they transferred $1 million to my account in two days. This is exactly it has happened. And this is exactly I have done it like this. Many times I have done it like this. And now the work starts. And then end of first month, end of second month, end of third month, whatever, maybe it is end of the year coming because the contract was signed in, you know, on December, on November 1st. Let's suppose on December 1st, okay? And then what happened that during December, I incurred, I started the job and I spent something like 1.3 million. So when I, so they gave me 1 million and that was advanced and that was a liability. Okay. That was a liability. Then what happened that I started my job and during December, I started purchasing materials. I started the construction job and I incurred my costs, which are 1.3 million. So it's not like I will go to them and say, you know what? You gave me 1 million. I spent 1.3. Now give me 300,000. It will not be done like this because payments are made on certain stages. It is already defined in the contract that when you will finish foundation, we give you first payment. You finish the structure, we give you second payment, or maybe the payments are made on monthly basis. And then when you make the payment on the monthly basis, and actually the work has been approved by a third party supervisor. I have spent 1.3 million, by my, but my work has been probably not verified. Maybe the work has been verified, but even the work is verified, I cannot issue invoice because invoice needs some other documents to be signed by them. And those documents have not been signed yet. So I have spent 1.3 million. My work has been approved as 1.3 or 1.5 million, whatever, but I have not given the invoice because invoice receives certain documents from their side. Those documents are still not available and therefore I cannot give invoice. So therefore the payments, you know, when you receive, you do the work, alignment is not there. There is a lot of how to say 
uh, it's not on daily basis. Every day I do something, I get money. Sometimes I receive money in advance and I am under obligation. Sometimes I have performed more work than what I have received money. They gave me 1 million. I have already done work for 1.8 million. 1.8 million. So now it is on their side. So these are the normal situations which happen under construction contracts. Now, the topic here, which we are going to discuss, I just told you the background so that you understand that this contract, asset contract liability, where it comes from. So that's the background. Now, remember that the previous standard was IES 11. It was called construction contracts. The standard was in force until 2015 when IFRS 15 came. This standard, which was IS 11. So previously we had two standards for revenue. We had IS 18, which was called revenue. That was for simple transactions and the construction contracts were handled by a separate standard called IS 11, construction contract. These two standards were canceled. And in 2015, we got a new standard called IFRS 15, revenue from contracts with customers. So IFRS 15 actually replaced both of these standards, IS 11 and IS 18. So I am actually now not speaking about 18 at the moment because construction contract and the contract asset contract liability was not covered in IS 18. It was covered in IS 11. So I remove IS 18 for a moment. So when you calculate contract asset or contract liability, you have two methods. One method which was given by IS 11 and the second method which is given by IFRS 15. Now, very interestingly, we know that IS 11 has been canceled. IS 11 is no more there. So if IS 11 is not there, this method should also not be there. But surprisingly, ACCA allows you, ACCA says that until June 22, June 22, they say that the correct method is IFRS 15. We should be using IFRS 15 method of calculating contract asset or contract liability. We should be using the method which has been prescribed by IFRS 15. But, but because this method was so widely used that somehow it is still in our memory, the memory of the tutors and the memory of you know, the students. So ACCA has given this relaxation period. They say that until June 22, until June 22 exams included, in exam, either you calculate from this method or you from calculate from this method, you will get marks. You will get marks for using any of the two methods. Yes, from September 22, only IFRS 15 method, you will receive marks. And this mark, if you use old method, you will not get marks. So first we need to understand what is our, you know, IFRS 15 method. What does it say? IFRS 15 method, it says you, now I will write down here so that you can understand it is called revenue recognized, how much revenue you have recognized. And of course, revenue which you will recognize that would be based on, of course, you know, verified. You can only re recognize the revenue which has been verified by a third party. Revenue recognized, which is let's suppose X. And then you say that, you know, um, less amounts invoiced amounts which invoiced which for which you have sent the invoice already you subtract it and whatever is the difference that's very simple whatever is the difference that is called contract asset or liability okay this is contract asset or contract liability whatever it is and there's no problem in that Let's suppose, like I told you, that I signed the contract. They gave me one million. Um, you know, I didn't do any job. I just signed the contract two days ago. I still have to mobilize my people. I told them, give me money 
so that I can mobilize my equipment and I can mobilize my people. My recognized revenue is zero, but I already have received 1 million. So in that case, I have a contract liability here. My contract liability is 1 million. Then end of the month, I did the job and they recognize the revenue. They admit that I performed the work worth of 1.8 million. So 1.8 million I have worked and I have invoiced only 1 million. I have invoiced only 1 million. The remaining work I have performed, but not invoiced. Not invoiced. Invoice was not sent. So now I have a contract asset of 0 0.8 million. This is very simple, straightforward under IFRS 15. Now, if I go back to IS 11 concept, the contract asset and contract liability under IS 11, here you don't talk about revenue recognized. You talk about costs incurred. You know, you talk about how much you have incurred the costs. Costs incurred. And you call it cost incurred to date. To date means until when you are preparing the financial statements. And then you calculate profit or loss <coughs> to date. For example, I know that I put 30% markup on cost. If my cost has been, I don't know, you know, 1 million, 30% of 1 million is 300. So this is the profit I should recognize. This is my cost. This is my profit. So it is kind of the sales price type of thing coming up, but you show it separately. So you calculate how much cost you have incurred and what is your profit or loss, which you have incurred so far. I know that I have, you know, my total profit is, let's suppose 300,000. I have performed 30% of the contract. So 300,000 into 30% or 33%, one third, 33%, I can say that 100,000, I can recognize my profit. So you say it cost incurred to date, profit or loss, you calculate whatever you have accumulated until now. And then you say less amount invoiced, the same which you have before. And that would result in your contract asset or your contract liability, okay? So my cost incurred to date is, I don't know, 1 million. My profit is 0 0.3 million. I have already invoiced them, I don't know, 1 million. And the net result is that I have got a contract asset of 0 0.3 million. So this model of IES 11 of calculating contract asset or contract liability, it formed its basis on what you have incurred the cost and based on the cost and based on the work completed, how much profit you can recognize that, okay, this much of the job is done. Therefore, this much of the profit can be realized. And then out of which, how much you have invoiced. Now, please pay attention. I am not saying received. I am not saying received because that is going until a different thing. I'm talking about invoice. I'm talking about invoiced. You might have received it or not received it. So you use the word invoiced, less amount invoiced or, you know, uh, yeah, amount invoiced. And that gives you contract asset or liability. Now, which method are you going to use? I would suggest you people that you use this method, which is your IFRS 15, because this method is already an old method. ACCA is only giving you a relaxation for a certain period to use it. Otherwise, this method is gone. This method is gone. The proper method is, which is under IFRS 15. So number one, why should we use IFRS 15? That number one, that this is what is under IFRS 15. This is the correct way of doing it. Number two, that it is easy to calculate. And number three, when you will see your books and your practice kits, you will see this method. So this is the method which is used in the practice kit and the book. So when you will read it, you will understand it, you will see it happening. And ACCA will also award marks. ACCA will also give marks to this method as well. But why do you create confusion? So you just keep in mind that if you have used it in past, you can still use it until June 22. But the correct approach is, Revenue recognized, less amounts invoiced, 
and that gives rise to contract asset or contract liability. Because it is possible that revenue recognized is more, but invoice, invo uh, invoice amount invoiced is less. Let's suppose you know, the surveyor, the independent third party comes in and they say, Mr. Ali, you have performed 3 million of job. So, you know, how did it happen? I tell you. So this is the timeline. And usually they do it on monthly basis or, you know, every month we issue invoices. So they came here, they recognized my revenue here, 1 million. And I sent my invoice here, 1 million. Then they come up here, they again recognized my, my revenue. They say, okay, 1.5 million of work is done in this period. And they come up, they do it end of the month. And then beginning of next month, after five, six, seven days, I need some documents. Those documents come in and I send an invoice of further 1.5 million. Now, this is the end of the year. On the end of the year, they come in here and they again say that you have performed 1 million of work. But on this particular date, I have not invoiced it. I will invoice it somewhere in the next year. So my total revenue recognized or my work verified is you know, 1, 2, and 3.5 million. Whereas total invoice has gone only as 2.5 million because this invoice I will send somewhere here. So that difference of 1 million is my contract asset, which I still have to invoice them. Because once I invoice them, then it becomes receivable. When I invoice them, then it becomes receivable. Okay. So I invoice them 1 million, 1.5. Maybe they have not given me the money, but this 1 and 1.5 is already under receivable. But remaining one, it is in the air. This 1 million, it is purely in the air because they, it has been verified but it has not been put on paper. It is in the air. That's why I call it contract asset. It is different from receivable. Contract receivable is that amount which I have invoiced. Maybe they gave me this money, I received it. Maybe they have not given this money yet. So if I ask you from this scenario, from this scenario, received is 1 million. Receivable, receivable is 1.5 million and contract asset is 1 million. And together these three, 3.5 will make equal to this number, my revenue recognized. So receivable and asset are two different things. Receivable is the thing which I already have invoiced and I'm waiting. So this is my receivable thing when I invoiced. And Contract asset is that thing which I have not yet invoiced. So I actually invoiced first 1 million. Then I invoiced again 1.5 million. So I invoiced 2.5 million, which is this number. Out of this 2.5, 1 million cash I received and 1.5 million is still my receivable. So I can call it that this 1 million received or cash, it is the same thing. Cash, I received 1 million. Receivable, I'm waiting 1.5 million. And 1 million, I have not given invoice. I will give them invoice in next few days. Are we clear? Just so we're clear. 